Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to TPP Frontline. I am your host, Christopher Billings, and we are just a couple of weeks away from blood and glory. We're literally 15 days away, and it's going to be one heck of a phenomenal event. Uh, we do know for certain that uh, Extreme will be facing Craig Hazard for the TPP Championship. Uh, we don't know the match type, however, but I'm sure that we're going to find out you know within the next couple of uh hopefully within the next two shows hopefully by the end of this show we'll know i mean we i'm not sure what they have booked tonight i i mean i have some of the notes but uh but that's about it and uh i'm i'm super excited to get this night underway and i'm sure you are as well and uh i am i am ready and I hope you're ready. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that's going to be going on tonight. So it's definitely this is a show that I'm glad that you're with us for tonight. And uh, with that being said, it is time to get this show underway. And what better way to start the show than having the internet champion come out, uh, Damian Gamer? This young man, although he did lose to uh, the TPP champion Craig Hazard uh, last week, it was still a phenomenal matchup. And you can't take anything away from Damian Gamer, and you can't take anything away from Craig Hazard. These two, these two warriors went out there. And they put it all on the line for the T, for the TPP universe. And everybody that was in attendance, everybody that saw that, realized just how great that matchup was. And it's not very often you get to see an excellent match like that happen. And uh, it looks like Damian Gamer is asking for a microphone. And I think this is. This is going to be pretty good, you know, getting to hear uh, Damian Gamer. We haven't heard from him in, uh, in a couple of weeks, and uh, so I'm interested to know what he's got to say. And uh, this night is just full of excitement, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let's cut to the ring and see what Damian Gamer, uh, what he's going to say to the TPP universe here tonight. First of all, I'd like to say that my match with Hazard last week, though it resulted in my first ever loss here in TPP, one of the best damn matches I've ever had the pleasure of competing in. And I couldn't imagine a better person to beat me than our esteemed TPP World Champion, Mr. Craig Hazard. Give it up for Hazard, everyone. Hazard, I hope you're listening. I had a fun and phenomenal time, and I'm sure you did too. So the offer is extended to you for another amazing one-on-one, -on -one, anytime, anywhere. And I eagerly look forward to your reply. Now. I would like to apologize to the fans for Bryson's disappearing act and the lack of a main event on episode 13 due to Die Hard removing me from the building. I was sincerely looking forward to beating his ass again and proving once and for all that Bryson just can't cut it against me. But neither of us were available for that to happen. You know, speaking about it now, I wonder if he's going to get fined for this. I got fined for missing a show when my child was born. I had a legitimate reason for not being there and Die Hard fined me. Bryson has missed the past three weeks and three shows, and I expect the same punishment for Bryson. Bryson, if you're listening wherever you are, whether you're actually putting in time at the gym or sitting on your lazy ass watching at home while the rest of us pull your slack and make this show what it is, the challenge is still out there. Me and you at Blood and Glory for the TPP Internet Championship, and one of us will be the last man standing, if you're not scared, that is. You know, I gotta agree with Damian Gamer here. Bryson has been missing. Uh, he's missed the past three shows. No word from him. And, uh, you know, tonight, Damian Gamer has to focus on this young man, Travis Porter, who's looking to make an impact here on Frontline. And, of course, TPP Frontline is brought to you by MCW. Make sure to check them out on YouTube at MCW Promotions and follow them on Twitter at MCWHD and make sure to use the hashtag CAW to get involved in the conversation. And uh, as I was saying, though, you know, Damian Gamer's right. Bryson has, uh, he's kind of flown the coop for the past three weeks. He hasn't been on Twitter. He hasn't done anything. Uh, nobody's talked to him. As far as I know, Die Hard hasn't even talked to him. And as you see here, uh, those words must have fired Damian Gamer up because he's just dishing out the pain right now to, uh, to Porter and... Uh, the thing, the thing is, Porter, he's a he's a young guy, but oh, quick hurt can run of there by uh, by Travis Porter. Uh, Travis Porter's a very young guy, but as you see, Damian Gamer uh, showing that he's very well rounded uh, with speed and strength and technical prowess. And right now, Damian Gamer is going to work on Travis Porter, just kind of having his way with them. Travis Porter not even really able to get out of the gates here, 
and he's just kind of getting spine buster after spine buster from Damian Gamer, and uh, you know, just right on the back. And, and <laughs> this match, not just now getting about less than a minute old, and uh, Damian Gamer already has Travis Porter reeling, but Travis Porter trying to get something going, and as you saw there, he kicked Damian Gamer in the face, but Gamer did not fall down, and uh, now Gamer's starting or uh, Travis Porter starting to get a little bit of uh, momentum here a flurry of drop kicks to Damian Gamer but just like that that kick got caught Damian Gamer with the basic trip and I don't want to say that uh, you know Damian I don't think any aggressive behavior from Damian Gamer tonight has anything to do with facing Travis Porter I think that it's just because of the frustration that Gamer has for Bry Bryson right now and as you see Gamer there's one fisherman suplex. Is he going to go for the second here? He, he's got the second fisherman in. Will we see the trifecta, the third fisherman suplex? And sure enough, three fisherman suplexes in a row. The trifecta from Damian Gamer. And as you see, the fans love Damian Gamer. He is one of the most popular, if not the most popular superstars here on Frontline uh, next to the TPP champion, Craig Hazard. And, uh, you know, the words he said were, were great about Craig Hazard and Porter getting a little bit of offense and a quick hurricane Rana there for Porter into the cover hooks of our leg. One, two, and a quick two count there for Travis Porter and Porter off the ropes. And he got caught with a big spine buster from Damian Gamer. And just like that, that's how you switch. That's how you swing the momentum. Uh, you catch somebody coming off the ropes and you just slam them onto their, their spine and their lower back and that will take all the momentum out of their sails. And now Damian Gamer back in control here of this matchup with Travis Porter. And uh, Damian's making quick work here. Porter. I mean, Porter's, Porter's trying to, he's trying to hang in there. He's trying to fight against the internet champion. This is a big match. If Travis Porter were to win tonight, you gotta believe that management would be looking at that as this young man can beat the internet champion. However, I just don't foresee that happening, and that big right hand, I think, is going to agree with me. Uh, hooks the far leg. One, two, and a, a two count for Damian Gamer. And, uh, tr you know, Travis Porter, he's he's having trouble getting out of the gates here. Uh, Damian Gamer is just... He's just... He's roughing him up right now. And uh, it's kind of the way it happens. I mean, Damian Gamer, he's a very high-caliber uh, TPP superstar. Uh, he doesn't have years and years of experience like people like Die Hard or those that have been wrestling for 15 years or 10 years, but he is a very high caliber, uh, very uh, professional oriented superstar. When you see Damian Gamer in the back, he's always working, whether he's working with himself or he's working with uh, you know, uh, the younger talent. He's always trying to help himself and help others to achieve greatness. And he's a consummate professional. And right now we're seeing just how how a consummate uh, Damian Gamer can be as he's stringing these moves together. He's the flow that he has. It's just it's gotten so much greater since he became the internet champion. And a big counter there, a much needed counter for uh, Porter, but Porter unable to capitalize on that. And now Gamer back in control of this matchup. And so the question remains. I mean, we we heard. Gamers say that the challenge is there for Bryson. If Bryson wants to compete for the internet championship at Blood and Glory, he has the opportunity to do that against Damian Gamer. But we have yet to hear from him. And he, a cover again and a, a two count. I don't think that Gamer was looking for the three count on that. I think he was just looking for a two. But, oh, a big sleeper slam there from Travis Porter, giving himself a little bit of a comeback here. And now... Porter starting to get some momentum. Wait a second, Porter from behind with a drop kick right to the right to the back of the head. And as you see, Travis Porter starting to taunt. He should have followed up with that. Damian Gamer is not the kind of guy you want to, uh, you know, fool around with. You you don't want to give him an opportunity to catch his breath. If you have him down, you need to keep on him. And uh, as I was saying, I mean, Damian basically told Bryson if you want a shot one more shot at the at the uh, internet championship come and get it at blood and glory and it remains to be seen if you know Bryson's gonna ex if he's gonna accept that we don't even know if he's still gonna we don't know if he's ever gonna wrestle again like I said nobody's talked to him uh, he's been scheduled for matches and hasn't he's even scheduled tonight 
uh, for another tag team match against Jerry Graham and Jimmy B. Martinez. And I haven't seen him. So I don't know if he's here. I don't think he's here. But as you see now, Travis Porter starting to get some momentum. He's calling for something. Gamer was caught off of uh, off his guard there and into cover one, two, almost a three count, almost a huge upset win for Porter. Porter hits the ropes, but Gamer ran behind him. Uh, but Porter, you know, sidestepped it there. And Porter trying for that drop kick again, but Gamer basically shutting him down, saying it's not happening anymore. And uh, I think, I think that uh, Travis Porter's time may have just run out. Gamer picking up the pace here, that the pullback back elbow. Gamer with a big running clothesline off the ropes there. And it, it looks like Gamer, it looks like Damian Gamer's getting ready to wrap this one up. And uh, Damian Gamer here, he he calls this move the leg switch. And <laughs> I think that this is it. Wait a second, what is, what's Gamer doing here? Gamer, wait a second. Damien Gamer's looking, he's looking for it a second time here. A second leg switch. Damien Gamer with two leg switches here to Travis Porter. I think Porter is done. I don't think he's going to kick out. And uh, Gamer now hooks the far leg. One, two, three. And, and sympathetically, Damien Gamer ends it for Travis Porter. You know, Travis Porter, he tried to go out there and he tried to win. Uh, but Damien Gamer, he's the internet champion and he was ready. He, he's Damien Gamer is pumped for blood and glory. I hope Travis Porter's pumped for blood and glory as well. I hope you're all pumped for blood and glory. Because Damien Gamer is on a hot streak right now. Even though he lost to uh, Craig Hazard last week, he is still one of the hottest superstars in the power plant alongside the TPP champion. Um, we've gotten many letters of uh, fan mail, uh, especially since Craig Hazard became the TPP champion, but as well for Damian Gamer becoming the uh, internet champion, and and they love seeing those super... So like I said, Damian Gamer, Craig Hazard, two of the most popular superstars on Frontline, and uh, that's big. And later on tonight, like I was saying earlier, Jerry Graham and Jimmy B. Martinez are scheduled to face Brick Wall and Bryson in a tag team match. But like I said, I don't think Bryson's here. So I don't know what I don't know what Brickwall is gonna be in a third handicap match. Brickwall has been in handicap matches all all month long. And uh, so that's kinda scary for uh, for Brickwall. But uh, you know, the show must go on and we are we're just moving along here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also tonight RCW presents Frontline. Uh, make sure to check them out on YouTube at HRC Networks and follow them on Twitter, RCW underscore on underscore XBL. And tonight, Kanji is looking to, you know, he's looking to solidify himself and give himself something to uh, really believe in. He picked up a, a, a crazy roll-up uh, pinfall, uh, you know, last week against Anthony Guerrero Jr. And uh, so you got to believe he's looking to, uh, you know, I'll give I'll give you the breakdown of what happened when after Frontline went off the air last week, uh, we were all back. Management was backstage, and uh, Anthony Guerrero Jr. was back there, and he was whining uh, about how you know this theme song hit, and it said Jamie Hall up on the uh, on the Titan Tron, and he said that that shouldn't happen in his matches. That he's you know the owner's son, and he blamed that on the reason why he lost. And, and there's a good possibility that that distraction did cause Jr. to lose. However, uh, with with being any form of superstar in any place, uh, it is your job at the time when you're in the ring to focus on what you're doing and, and who you're wrestling. And it was his job at the time to focus on Kanji. So it will it went down in the record books that Anthony Guerrero Jr. lost to Kanji, and now Anthony Guerrero Jr. looking to get a little bit of retribution for himself. He demanded a rematch with Kanji tonight, um, you know. And last week Kanji took it to Jr. and I, I, I spoke with Kanji, and uh, he said that he, he had a blast out there. He said it was fun. He said he, he he happily accepted this rematch, and he wants to. He said he wants to beat Junior again, and uh, so for Anthony Guerrero Junior, he's got to he's got to get in his he's got to get in a good state of mind here because uh, he's losing his focus again, and, and it's a problem. And I I think the issue. I mean, yeah, we're, we've seen these cryptic tweets on Twitter. Uh, from uh, Jamie Hall kind of hinting that he might have signed a contract, but we don't know for sure. I mean, I, I know nothing about that. 
thus far. Um, but there are things that I'm kept in, in the dark about. So we'll find out eventually. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, like I said, Junior wants to get some uh, revenge tonight against Kanji. And Junior right on the aggressive there and then slapping the knee. And Kanji doing a little bit of taunting, showing that he isn't feeling bad about last week. And Junior with that, that standing drop kick of his own. And uh, the one thing is about these, uh, these younger superstars, they don't have a... They don't have the decade of experience like superstars like uh, like Die Hard had or like James Braden or, or other superstars, you know. I, I think one of our most experienced superstars currently in the power plant would be Craig Hazard. Craig Hazard and Extreme would be two of our most experienced superstars, uh, you know, longevity-wise of how long they've been wrestling. So these, when I get to see these young superstars come out here, I'm so happy because right now Kanji is taking it to Anthony Guerrero Jr. And uh, if Junior doesn't get something, if he doesn't start focusing, this is going to be a, a two-week losing streak for Anthony Guerrero Jr. And, and you know that that's not what he wants. No superstar wants to be on a, on a losing streak indefinitely. And they're always striving to be the best they can. And the, the worst part is we, we saw Junior take this new form, um, you know, and I don't think it, I don't think it helped him uh, as much as it has hurt him. And Junior with a swift kick right to the back of the head. Nothing fancy about that kick. It was meant to knock Kanji out. Uh, luckily, Kanji, he's got a, a head that's made out of brick. So a kick to the back of the head doesn't exactly knock him out. And Kanji starting to get some a little bit of momentum. But but Junior quickly shutting it down, uh, you know, keeping it in, in, his, uh, in his favor. And Junior with that front face tie-up. But Kanji sidesteps in a big running spinning wheel kick. And uh, this is the thing. Right now, Junior is getting it brought. It's getting brought to him by Kanji. And Junior's got to do something. And as you see, Junior shades of his father there stepping on the face. And uh, an, a big a stand, a standing vertical drop kick there from Anthony Guerrero Jr. Impressive to say the least, you know, with as young as he is. So it's, it's always going to be impressive. And Junior with a kick right to the ribs there. And now starting to dissect the body parts. I, and as you saw, Junior giving a very uh, disruptive taunt there to uh, to the TPP universe. And Kanji is still fighting back, though. And that is what is so impressive. He's still fighting back. He uh, missed with that, that body press there. It looked like Junior kind of backed out of the way. And now Junior goes off the ropes. But Kanji, with the... The flying cross body. He leaped from the ground and did a, a flying cross body. That was that was phenomenal. And uh, this is this is what I'm talking about. I I think Kanji has Junior's number. I don't think Junior can beat Kanji. And Kanji looks like he. I think he's looking for that kick. He's he's looking for that KO kick. And uh, no Kanji going for that quick roll up again. One, two. Almost a three, that shades of what happened last week. Kanji almost got Junior, but Junior with that quick arm drag, somehow Junior brought it back. And as you see, Junior was just stomping away. And then that, that seated spine buster, nothing fancy about that. Hooks the far leg, one, two, and only a two count though. Kanji showing he's got, he's got the ability to kick out of uh, a move that puts people away. And uh, right now, I think, I think, Anthony, and as you see, I think Anthony Guerrero Jr. is getting frustrated, you know, now doing close fist punches, uh, again, shades of his father, and uh, I don't, like I said before, I don't think this was wise for Jr. to do this, and now Jr. has Kanji in the corner, and a big raised knee lift there, and uh, this is, I want to, I want to say that Jr. someday will, you know, break into his own, but until he can really learn to focus i mean he had momentum there and he made one small mistake and now kanji back on the offensive there's two two uh back uh back chops there and kanji whips junior into the corner leaps in with a double knee junior unable to even cover up there into the cover but the foot was on the rope so the referee called for the rope break and now junior trying to get something going and uh a quick flurry of kicks right to the uh, the back of the left knee. That'll that'll definitely take you out of your game there. And uh, Junior going for the cover again after that standing moonsault and the two a two count for Anthony Guerrero Jr. 
And now Junior going off the ropes and getting caught with that spinning wheel kick from Kanji. And uh, right, and Kanji, beautiful Northern Lights, beautiful bridge. One, two, and only a two count for Kanji. And uh, now Junior with the, an elbow right to the, uh, the top of the skull there. And a, a Hurricane Rana, nothing fancy about it, just a Hurricane Rana, hooks the far leg. One, only a one count for Junior there. And now Junior again off the ropes, but Kanji catches him. And Kanji with a basic scoop slam. And this is, I th like I said, I think, oh, oh, and a big miss there. Kanji went for it. He crashed and he burned uh, into the <laughs> Junior into the cover here. Two, and only a two count for Junior. But as I was going to say, I think Kanji uh, has Junior's number. Junior doesn't seem to have the, he doesn't have something going in the, uh, the right way for him right now and wait a second junior a big hurricane run of the kanji into the ropes there and now junior using his body weight as uh as leverage there with that body press and then junior a frog splash from the apron to the inside of the ring there and now again junior with that flying hurricane run and again he's got kanji set up on the ropes and again Again, Junior doing that body press on the ropes, and, and Junior's started to kind of slow this match down a little bit, and uh, I think that that's what he needed. Junior, wait a second, going off the ropes, that big running knee strike there, and now what's Junior, wait, oh, wait a second, that's that theme song again, and he, wait, Junior turned around, but wait a second, he was ready this time, and now Junior picks the leg. He looks like he's going for that. No, it's that triangle choke. I was going to say a sharpshooter, but it's that triangle choke that we've seen uh, Junior do before, uh, you know, on on the uh, on the developmental show. And, and now Junior's wrenching. And will Kanji tap out? And, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you heard that or not, but uh, if you didn't, Junior started screaming is this what you want Jamie is this what you want uh, I don't I don't know if you heard that or not but he started yelling is this what you want while he was wrenching that move on uh, on Kanji and Kanji had nowhere to he had no choice but to tap out unfortunately uh, when you're locked in that kind of a hold you can't really get to the ropes you either have to get you either have to tap or snap and unfortunately for Kanji tonight Junior was able to get retribution for himself and now Junior picks up a win as he's heading in, as he's heading into uh, Blood and Glory. Now I, I I'm kind of I'm wondering what we have up next. Uh, my notes just say special event. Uh, it doesn't tell me exactly what it is. And uh, well, I'm assuming it's got something to do with Atlas. And uh, if you saw last week's episode, you saw this young man debut. 23 years of age, six foot nine and a half, you know, 300 and, uh, or 295 pounds. This guy is a big guy. He's a funny guy. And uh, he just, he's happy to be here. I talked to him after last week's episode. Although uh, Titan attacked him and got himself disqualified, you know, Atlas was still in good spirits. He said that he was feeling really good that he was able to do what he was able to do against Titan. Uh, you know, somebody as seasoned as Titan was as Titan is so uh, I'm interested to see why Al Siri it, he's not in wrestling attire so I'm not really sure you know <laughs> why uh, why Atlas is here but now um, we have this strange lighting um, in the arena right now and uh, I don't really know what to make of this um, it's the ring it's a blue hue for all the lighting so I'm not sure what to expect it looks like Atlas is calling for a microphone though so maybe Atlas will you know let us in on it now last week Titan and myself had a match and it was a great match until Titan decided he wanted to step outside the rules now tonight Titan I didn't cry to management and beg for a rematch. This is what I'm this is what I'm offering you tonight, Titan. You said you needed a challenge. You wanted somebody that can match you pound for pound. I am six foot nine, two hundred and ninety-seven pounds of young talent. So what I'm proposing tonight 
is you come out here, Titan, and you face Atlas. In a test of strength, we will see who the stronger man really is. Because everybody knows that a true champion, a true warrior, deserves everything he is given. Unlike somebody like you, who is a crybaby. I don't cry, I don't whine when I don't get my way. I work hard every single day that I do something. So what do you say, Titan? Are you going to come out here and face me in a test of strength? Well, that that's big. I mean... <laughs> Okay, well, I'm assuming Titan's going to come out, and uh, so I've never really called, ladies and gentlemen, I've never called a, a test of strength bout, um, so I'm not really sure how we how we decide who the winner is. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's the person who wins the tie, I, the, you know, who, who wins uh, the, uh, the test of strength, and uh, so this is, Atlas is challenging Titan to see who is more physically stronger and uh, Titan 317 pounds uh, 6 foot 10 I mean they're very close in uh, height and they're built very similar um, I think that uh, tight we might have to get the the edge here to uh, Titan you know he, he's got more experience and I think Titan might be a little bit stronger but I could be wrong uh, and I guess we're about to find out in this test of strength again we have this this dark room lighting, very uh, blue-esque, and uh, so here we go with the test. And as you see, Atlas is right from the get-go showing his physique, but Titan showing that he's got muscle structure as well. And uh, so as you see here, Atlas on your left, Titan on your right, and Atlas motioning that he's he's ready to do this. And it's just kind of a stare down now. These these big behemoths are going to tie up here, and here we go. And, and Titan and Atlas. Oh, and a stalemate, matching strength, tit for tat there. And again, they, they match strength. And, uh, oh, wow, Atlas got the uh, the better of the situation there. And as you see, Atlas showing his physique again to Titan, showing his strength. And now again, Titan and Atlas a standing tie-up, but Titan using his strength, his intelligence, and now Titan showing his his muscles to, uh, to Atlas. And now again... This is this is intense. These guys are starting to sweat in here. These are both very strong men tying up with each other, and we, I'm, I'm wondering who's go, who's going to win here. And and Titan again got the better of the situation, and again Titan showing his muscles, kissing his muscles. But here we go again, another attempted test of strength here. But Titan uh, on the defense. There's Atlas. Showing his strength, and as you see here, Atlas taking his time, showing his muscles, and again the standing tie-up. This is this is intense. Like, <laughs> oh, and Atlas just he got that. And this is intense. This is very intense. Um, I can you you can't hear them grunting, but I can hear them grunting um, from my from my commentary table here. But these guys, they are they're trying to physically push each other, and. Uh, and they kind of backed away, and here we go again. This is this is very these they're matching strength. And as you see here, Titan now going to our hard camera, the camera that everybody sees all the time, taunting to the fans. And uh, Titan again showing his physique, saying that he's not he's not intimidated by uh, Atlas. And Atlas kind of standing back there, saying he's ready to do this again. And uh, wait, oh no, Titan getting shown up by Atlas, the fans cheering, uh, whistling for, for Atlas, but oh, a big clothesline there from Titan uh, to the back of the head, and, and now Titan right on the uh, the aggressive. I don't think he liked being shown up there, and now Titan stomping away in the corner here. That That is that is just despicable of, of Titan to do that, and uh, now Titan leaving the ring, thank God, uh, and Atlas sitting up in the corner, like what is going on, um, ladies and gentlemen. I think I think Atlas won. I really do. And uh, we have to take a, a quick commercial break. Uh, we will be back in just a quick moment. So just sit tight, folks, and we will be right back. Hi, I'm Die Hard, the CEO of the Power Plant. Now I get many occurrences throughout the week when people ask me 
What does it take to be a TPP superstar? Well, most importantly, you have to be a constant professional. You always have to think and put the fans first. And I also always get questions of, is it storyline driven? Are there meaningful things? Remember, TPP Frontline, it is a family-oriented program. We care about our superstars. Every wrestler that wrestles in TPP knows that there are dangers involved with wrestling. As any gifted athlete in the world would say, it always comes down to this. These are trained professional right off, athletes. Three on one here. The numbers game. So what makes you think that TPP Frontline is different? It's just the way we are. We are a different kind of place to be. Again, I'm Die Hard, the CEO of the power plant. And we're back here, ladies and gentlemen. I never get tired of seeing that commercial. Uh, when Die Hard, my favorite part of that commercial, when Die Hard says he cares about the TPP superstars. And then, of course, our following matchup, it's Armed and Dangerous, which, you know, Jerry Graham, in that, in that commercial, you see Jerry Graham getting beat up by TCO. Uh, but, uh, but Jerry Graham and uh, Jimmy B. Martinez are scheduled to take on Brickwall and Bryson in a tag team match. Uh, unfortunately, like I said earlier in the show, um, I haven't talked to Bryson. I, I haven't, as far as I know, Bryson hasn't been around. So nobody's talked to Bryson since Urban Warfare. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. And it doesn't sound like Bryson's coming out with Brick Wall because that's Brick Wall's theme. That's not the TCO theme song. That's that's just Brick Wall's theme song. And Brick Wall looks like he's coming out alone. And as you see, there's a little bit of frustration on Brick Wall's face. He doesn't look too thrilled that uh, he's going to be in his third week of doing uh, handicap matches and, and you can't really blame Brickwall. I mean, it, yes, Brickwall makes a lot of people mad, but nobody deserves it, so many handicap matches. You know, nobody deserves this kind of treatment. And uh, unfortunately for Brickwall, I don't think he's got much of a much of a choice and uh, oh my, that that's Die Hard's theme song, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as far as I know, Die Hard is not scheduled to compete. Uh, Die Hard is not an active wrestler anymore. But it looks like Die Hard is... Die Hard, I think Die Hard might be coming out to support Brick Wall. And it doesn't look like Die Hard's too thrilled about having to do this. Uh, you, I, I, you could see the frustration kind of on his face. And uh, so I think... He's coming out in spite of being retired. I think he's coming out for moral support for Brickwall. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I mean, I'm sure you do know, but uh, Brickwall and Dyer have uh, years and years of, uh, you know, working together and experience with each other. And uh, with Bryson, Dyer kind of went out on a limb and brought Bryson in, and now Bryson is nowhere to be seen. And so, ideally, Die Hard's filling in for Bryson in this tag match, I'm assuming. I mean, Die Hard's not in wrestling attire, so I don't know what role Die Hard would really play in this match. But, uh, like I said, I think it's more or less for moral support. I think he's here. He's coming out here tonight to give his support and maybe help Brickwall out because it, it's tough fighting in a handicap match. I mean, it's one thing. It's hard enough to beat one person. Uh, when you have to beat two people that are both top superstars, That's that makes it even tougher. And uh, the caliber of the TPP superstars is bar none. And it actually looks like Die Hard's getting on the apron. So it looks like Die Hard's actually going to try to be an active participant in this matchup. He's telling the referee, let's do this. And uh, so I guess we're going to get this tag match underway. This is something I never thought I would see again. I never thought I'd see Brickwall and Die Hard in a tag team match as a tag team. But, uh, but here we go. Uh, Jerry Graham and Brickwall going to start things off here. Die Hard standing on the apron. This is this is pretty intense. And as you see, Jerry Graham 
uh, side headlock and now whipping brick wall into the ropes. Uh, a quick duck under there and oh, a big f uh, flailing double forearm there right to the top of the skull of brick wall. And like I said, I don't know exactly what Dyer can do in this situation uh, to really help. And ag again, it looked like Jerry Graham was going to attempt that, but brick wall with a quick hip toss. And now Jerry Graham again with the side headlock. Jockey, they're jockeying for position right now. And, uh, and Jerry Graham just said something to Die Hard as he did that neck breaker. And this is, there's a lot of animosity between Jerry Graham and, and Die Hard. And for those of you that don't know why, uh, last year, uh, or not even last year, it was actually at the beginning of this year, it was uh, about mid January, Jerry Graham told Die Hard he wanted to separate uh, from TCO and, and be his own man. And then uh, after that, that's, you know, Die Hard and TCO then assaulted Jerry Graham uh, on the relaunch of uh, a front line. And, and now, as you saw there, a quick tag by uh, Armed and Dangerous working as a very cohesive unit tonight. And at this point, Brickwall needs to get a tag. He needs to tag in Die Hard. Die Hard's still the, the fresh man. And uh, I think I don't think Brickwall's trying to tag in Die Hard. I think he's trying to, you know, do this on his own. But like I said, I, I think he needs to tag in Die Hard. He's going to have to get Die Hard in here uh, because Die Hard could potentially help the match. And uh, he, like I said, Brickwall's trying to do it on his own. I just don't think it's going to work. But a big jumping arm breaker from Brickwall there, that'll definitely, you know, that'll definitely help the situation. But Jimmy B. Martinez still showing that he's, you know, got the ability here to, to really give it to uh, to Brick Wall. And this is intense, you know, because there's, a like I said, there's a lot of hostility, um, you know, in this, uh, in everything. There's so much going on and there's so much that uh, can be done. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just wondering what exactly is going through the uh, through the mind of Brickwall right now. As he knows he's got to get Dyer tagged in, but he's trying not to. And uh, right now, Armed and Dangerous, A and B, they are working like a well-oiled machine. Um, and Brickwall's just kind of doing it on his own, but a big jumping clothesline there from, from Brickwall. That seated Jerry Graham momentarily, but uh, just long enough for... You know, Brickwall had just catch his breath, but not long enough to really stay on the offensive. And as you see, Jerry Graham with that T-bone suplex to Brickwall. And this is why I say he needs to get, he needs to tag in Dyer into the cover here. And only a one count for Jerry Graham. Brickwall struggling to get up as quick as he can. And now Jerry Graham again with that T-bone in. And your body can only take so many T-bone suplexes before he just can't take any more. And now Jerry Graham has uh, Brickwall in the corner, but Brickwall counters, and wait a second, Jerry Graham countered there. And now Jerry Graham with the basic German suplex right over by Die Hard's corner. Hooks the far leg, Die Hard getting in the ring now and breaking up the pin attempt. And uh, it looks like, like I said, I I think Die Hard wants to get into this matchup, and I, it hurt, I think it hurts him that he can't. And uh, Jerry Graham, just a flurry of strikes there to Brickwall. And now Jerry Graham with that running knee, that knee right to the side of the skull. That does not feel good. You can you can believe that. And uh, Jerry Graham with a drop toe hold. And uh, Brickwall getting up. But, oh, wait a second. Jerry Graham. There's one power bomb in Brickwall. Mind you, Brickwall is 280 pounds. You see Jerry Graham is struggling to pick up Brickwall. But he just gave him the, the three power bomb setup. And now, uh, look... And Jerry Graham telling Dyer, bring it on. Die Hard now pacing. Oh, and Jimmy B. Martinez just tripped Die Hard up there. And uh, Die Hard, <laughs> he, looked over, he looked over at me. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not in the match. I, I couldn't do anything about that. But uh, Jimmy B. Martinez just dished out some. Uh, he just tripped Die Hard and <laughs> knocked Die Hard right off the apron. And uh, now Brick Wall starting to get mount a little bit of offense here on Jerry Graham. But again, Jerry Graham still too fresh. And a, a big running big boot there from uh, from Jerry Graham. And, and now, wait a second, Jerry Graham's looking for something. Jerry Graham looks like he's going for the saving grace there. And now hooking the far leg. One, 
two, and Brickwell quickly kicks out, and Dyer was just pacing and cussing at uh, at Brickwell to kick out there. I know you couldn't hear it, but uh, he was doing that. And now Jerry Graham with that raised knee lift again, hooking the far leg one, and this time Diehard gets into the ring to break up the uh, the pinfall attempt there. And Brickwall is not looking so hot right now. He's looking like he's not feeling so well. And again, Jerry Graham, that raised knee lift. And now Jerry Graham throwing Brickwall to the outside. And 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 Dyard, oh, with a big right hand to Jerry Graham. And, and now Dyard grabbing Brickwall. And he's they're leave, they're go, they're leaving ringside here. They're, they're, the referee is counting. Uh, the, they've got a 10 count to get back in the ring, but it looks like Die Hard and Brickwall are taking the high road, and they are, they're leaving. Uh, Die Hard's pulling Brickwall up the entrance ramp, saying, live to fight another day. Is, it looks like that's what uh, Die Hard's mouth is saying it looks like. And uh, meanwhile, in the ring, A&D is just kind of like, what's going on here? Jerry Graham and Jimmy B. Martinez are like, you know, what's the deal? The referee is still counting. Uh, TCO is walking up the ramp now. Uh, now it looks like they are completely in the back. And uh, so for A and D, you know, it's like what – they don't really know what to do. The referee has no choice but to just continue to count here. He's almost to the 10 count now. And uh, I just – the referee's going to call for the bell there. A and D picks up a win over TCO. And uh, this is kind of like one of those sour grapes kind of celebrations. Uh, you know, A&D wanted to get a pinfall victory over TCO tonight. And unfortunately, Die Hard told Brickwall, no, it's, it's not happening tonight. And he, they just, TCO took a loss. And uh, they just, they took the high road. I, they, they robbed the fans. TCO robbed the fans again tonight by, uh, you know, not a, not fulfilling their full match and uh it's unfortunate but we can't really change that and uh you know ladies and gentlemen up next we have our main event and uh it's a pretty it's a big match for one of the superstars involved uh he's never been in the main event uh it's going to feature a tpp champion of course but it's uh, a very young hungry superstar that is getting the uh the opportunity and that's always you know that's really cool to get that type of opportunity and uh, now a and d heading up the entrance ramp here heading to the back and uh again folks i i do apologize that dyer had brick wall just lead the match like that i i thought that they were gonna you know do the match and entertain the fans but dyer had a different plan tonight uh so moving on to our main event of the evening this young man lance owens First time ever in the main event, and he's going against the TPP champion. This is, and I don't know if you saw that or not, but Lance Owens showing that he is definitely nervous. Uh, he he looks very nervous as he's coming to the ring right now. I, I don't think he's ever had all eyes on him during the main event. And uh, so you, you got to believe Lance Owens is looking to come out here tonight and impress, impress not only the TPP universe, but impress management and, and impress everybody else, uh, you know, on front line. He and he wants, of course, he wants to impress the champion, because you want you want to leave your your lasting mark on the uh, on the TPP champion. Because if you don't, then he'll you'll soon be forgotten. And uh, I, I can't say that enough. And it is that time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for our TPP champion. And the, as you hear the fans, the, the fans, they, they, they come unglued when uh, Craig Hazard comes out here. And I, I say this because Craig Hazard, and I will say this until the day I die, this young man waited. He waited for years and years and years. He waited for the opportunity to become the TPP champion. He, he, didn't, he didn't cheat. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He waited. And he earned every every opportunity he was ever offered for anything. And now that he's the TPP champion, I don't honestly think that there's anything that can stop Craig Hazard. This young man has his entire future now leveled out, laid out for him. There, he, there's a possibility that he will go down as the world's greatest TPP champion. I mean, yes, Die Hard, of course, had the longest reign as the TPP champion. We had people like Zach Samaro that held the TPP title. But Craig Hazard, 
the TPP champion. This is what everybody has wanted to see for the past two and a half years. And now we all get to see it. And we get to see it every week. And I love saying that. And uh, so, so here we go. Craig Hazard, Lance Owens. Lance Owens going to try to uh, make a name for himself here against the TPP champion. And Craig Hazard there quickly switches into the side headlock. And then a, a basic belly to uh, just a basic takedown there. And as you see, Craig Hazard, he's feeling good. And uh, again, the standing tie-up, Craig Hazard, Lance Owens. Again, Craig Hazard getting the better of the situation. And, and a, a quick uppercut there from our TPP champion. And this is this is what I love about Craig Hazard. He, the way that he does his strikes and waist, like Craig Hazard going off the ropes. But Owens catches Hazard with the... A big spine buster into the cover here, trying for a quick win and only a, a one count there, just so Hazard could catch his breath. And uh, and now Hazard getting right back into the uh, momentous swing. And Hazard, big running clothesline to uh, to Lance Owens there. And he didn't really give Lance Owens much of an opportunity to catch his breath. And now Craig Hazard again showing basic wrestling skills, just doing basic wrestling moves. And uh, you know there's nothing wrong with that. And Craig Hazard. A very hard Irish whip to the corner there. Craig Hazard, a flurry of, of kicks. And now uh, I think Craig Hazard is starting to take control here. And now with that, uh, that it's like a mod, it's like a mod, it's uh, like an arm stretch and a knee backbreaker all in one. And, and uh, Lance Owens using his head as a, as a weapon there and a big running clothesline from Lance Owens. And now Lance Owens in that side headlock. And now Owens starting to get a little bit of offense, a flurry of, of uh, kicks to uh, the TPP champion. And now Owens, oh, a big lunging clothesline there. And, a, a, and then a, just a, a stopping clothesline. And this is, I, I think Lance Owens is getting mad because he can't, he can't get something going against the, uh, against the champion right now. And uh, Craig Hazard is... He's a superstar that it's hard to prepare for because he's able to adapt to any situation that gets thrown at him. And Craig Hazard there, stretching out his limbs, uh, doing that big boot choke in the uh, in the corner there. And now, uh, I like I said, I think Craig Hazard has got the momentum in his favor. A big running uh, knee smash there, then a beautiful Russian leg sweep from the champion. And into the cover here, one, two, and only a two count for Craig Hazard. But as you see, Owens did not get up immediately. He held his chest. Uh, you know, he wasn't able to get up immediately. And uh, now Craig Hazard whips Owens into the ropes, leaps over him, and with a big flying cross body there, off the ropes goes Hazard. Oh, runs right in. There's two elbow drops. And then Craig Hazard, beautiful third jumping elbow drop there. And if you missed the first elbow drop, he, he ran at him and jumped down when he did it. And uh, now Lance Owens with a, a big belly to back there. And, uh, oh, a big right hand from uh, from Lance Owens. And I think Lance Owens is realizing he's got to do something. He's got to get into a, uh, into a way that he can start getting some offense on the champion. Because if Craig Hazard gets on the roll, this matchup will be over and Lance Owens will again lose. And I don't think that's what Lance Owens wants to do. And as I said earlier tonight, those spine busters will, they will definitely, you know, reposition uh, your vertebrae and everything else. And as you saw there, I mean, Lance Owens had a, he got a two count on the champion off of that spine buster. And spine busters hurt. And then now again into the cover and only a two count again for Lance Owens. Owens runs in and oh, an elbow drop right to the kidneys there. That was definitely, uh, ill intentions most definitely and now uh now craig hazard just those step kicks there right to the uh right to the forehead and oh a big knee and then the bulldog out of the corner there and now hooks the far leg one two only a two count for craig hazard but the longer this match goes you gotta believe the tpp champ it benefits the champion and uh craig hazard i think he realizes that he knows that he knows that the longer this match goes uh, it's going to, you know, be beneficial towards him. But Lance Owens, he's showing that he's got a little bit of ability to go here. But, oh, that knee 
backbreaker right on the back of the head and the neck. One, two, and only a two count again for Craig Hazard. But like I said, I think Craig Hazard knows the longer this match goes, it's going to benefit him. And oh, that 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 knee from Craig Hazard. And uh, Craig Hazard is one of those superstars in the power plant that every limb that he has is a weapon. And Craig Hazard with a duck under there. Oh, and a big jumping uh, kick there, a side kick into the cover. Two, and only a two count again for Craig Hazard. And, and Owens has, the past couple of minutes, it's been nothing but Craig Hazard. And, and now Owens getting something going, a much needed uh, overhead belly to belly. Owens hooking the far leg. One, two, only a two count for Lance Owens. And, and I think, and as you see, Owens is holding his ribs. He's he's hurting. He, he's hurting. He, he This is probably the longest match that Lance Owens has ever been in. And uh, <laughs> and now Craig Hazard, off of basic moves, just making Owens exert that energy, stretch out those ribs to try to kick out. He realizes that Owens is hurting. He knows those ribs are hurting, and that's what Craig Hazard does. He will expose your injury and let you know what's going on. And those are those shots are meant for the body. And now Craig Hazard, that hip toss out of the corner. And the reason why he does it that way, he uses the momentum he gets from the corner to uh, to throw them. And, and it's a great way to uh, really be more impactful. But Owens, a much-needed counter, a basic suplex. And now Owens, a series of close fist punches here. And now what is Owens with the stomps there? But wait, oh, Owens with that double knee backbreaker. We don't see that very often into the cover here. One, two. Oh, my. That was so close. Owens almost got a three count here. Owens going off the ropes. And, uh, oh, Craig Hazard caught him with that quick arm drag. And Owens, again, Owens ran into it. Is it are we going to see it? The flying man, Nora, there from Craig Hazard. That is a, a trademark setup there from, from Craig Hazard. Two. Almost a three count off that Mayonora. And now Craig Hazard, that flurry of strikes again. Lance Owens, he has not been able to get out of, I mean, he's gotten some offensive moves, but Craig Hazard able to shut him down at every curve. And as you, as you hear, I mean, the fans are ecstatic. They have been so lively this entire match. And uh, it could just be because the TPP champions here, but... Craig Hazard is that he's that superstar that you want to see and as you see Owens trying to do a little bit of a striking game with uh, with Craig Hazard but Craig Hazard very well versed in both wrestling and, and uh, mixed martial arts uh, he has experience he he knows uh, jujitsu and uh, and uh, taekwondo so I mean uh, you know Craig Hazard is very well experienced and oh a big clothesline to the outside for Lance Owens and right now, Craig Hazard is making Lance Owens look like a legitimate TPP superstar. Craig Hazard to the outside with that crossbody right out here in front of us. And uh, Craig Hazard tapped my announce table there as he did that. And uh, I think I think I know what that means. Craig Hazard face first goes Lance Owens there. And now Craig Hazard just having some fun. And uh, I think... I think that's what he's doing. Craig Hazard with that front face tie up here. And then a scoop slam off the ropes. And then, oh, a, a running leg drop there. Hooks the far leg. One, two, only a two count for Craig Hazard. And like you, like I said, you got to believe Craig Hazard is just kind of having some fun. And, and as you see, I mean, like, Lance Owens is starting to get something going, but into the cover, one, two. And only a two count for Lance Owens. Like I said, I mean, Owens is trying to get something going, but I don't think it's enough at this point in time in the matchup. I mean, Craig Hazard, quick roll up here. One, two, and uh, that was almost it. Somehow Owens was able to kick out. and uh, But, you know, just like that, Craig Hazard back in the driver's seat. And now Craig Hazard with that... Uh, that seated lock or that seated arm stretch again uh, just working on the arms in the back and uh, Owens nowhere to go and now Craig Hazard whips Owens into the corner and what is uh, what is Craig Hazard thinking here Craig Hazard 
a beautiful bulldog out of the corner. I mean, we're seeing moves out of Craig Hazard tonight that I haven't seen personally in, in quite a while from Craig Hazard, but it's always good to see. And Lance Owens again with that that belly to belly. Uh, hooks the far leg. One, two. And now Owens going off the ropes and Hazard catches him with the clothesline. And as you see, Craig Hazard tying to the fans. The fans are going crazy. I mean, this crowd is electric tonight on uh, on Frontline. And Craig Hazard now hitting the top rope and leaps off of that big body splash. Hooks the far leg. One, two, and only a two count here. I mean, Owens, he's he's going. He, he's he's hanging in there against the, uh, the TPP champion. But will it be enough? Can he put away Craig Hazard? Craig Hazard, he is looking for it. The, the, he calls this the dose of reality there. And wait a second, Craig Hazard, he might, I think he's looking for this. And I think we got to come up with a new name other than the Vertebreaker. Although this is definitely a Vertebreaker. This is, this puts a lot of pain on you. Craig Hazard there, you got to believe this is it. This has got to be it. One, two, three, and Craig Hazard picks up an impressive win to say the least. And, and if, if anybody deserved the win, Craig Hazard deserved that win tonight. Lance Owens put on one hell of a performance, no doubt about it. But when you step in the ring with a TPP champion, you've got to have more than belly-to-belly -belly suplexes in your arsenal. you got to be able to... you really got to be able to go, and Craig Hazard showed Lance Owens exactly why he is the TPP champion and why he is proud to be the TPP champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it gets no better than that seeing your TPP champion victorious every week. And uh, we are out of time for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So on behalf of everybody from Full Screen, everybody at Crater X, everybody on TPP Frontline, everybody in TPP Management, everybody that does the YouTube channel, the websites, the, the Twitters, everything. I'm Christopher Billings. Thank you for joining us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Have a happy and safe week, and we will see you guys. We'll see you guys next time, of course. And... Uh, Remember, we're just a couple of weeks away from Blood and Glory, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be uh, a, hu a huge, huge event. So you're going to want to stick around for that. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Christopher Billings. And on behalf of everybody here on Frontline, have a good night. Be safe and take care, everybody. We will see you guys next week.